All right, everybody. So uh, today we'll be talking about uh, something called trigonometric substitution for integrals. Today being whenever you're watching this, I guess. And this is these problems can be complicated. They can be a lot more time consuming and have many more steps than other problems that we've done so far. All right. So just to give you that disclaimer up front. Uh, I feel better doing that, all right? We'll do problems like this with trig substitution. They don't look that different than problems that we've already learned how to do. But I want to emphasize about it that take this problem right here. This is a problem that we'll do by trig substitution. This is not U substitution. If you try to do it by U substitution, it's just not going to work, okay? Like, if you wanted to say, I, I think I can let u be 1 plus 4x squared. The du would be 8x dx, and there's no x dx to substitute the du in. All right. It's not integration by parts either, etc. This is a new problem. All right. So, first thing to tell you is that, yes, these, these are new problems, but it's not like they look like totally different than other problems that we've done. All right. So, you'll, you kind of have to get an eye... For this and it takes practice or it you know, takes being good at math sometimes and uh, you know you're gonna have to put the time in until you can get comfortable with all this all right so I will I'll, I'll get to the point soon enough I mean if you, some people probably just skim through the videos and look for the steps and ignore all the explanations and that's okay you can do what you want with the videos I feel like though before I tell you how to do this I should talk a little bit about the nature of substitution in general because trigonometric substitution is has something in common with U substitution. What do you think it is? Uh, the substitution, that you're substituting a variable in the integral and you work it with that new variable, okay? So here, like, this is just some crazy substitution problem that I thought of. I, I want to take a really easy problem and just think of some off-the-wall substitution to show you that, like, you know, substitutions can be anything, all right? So, okay, so this problem, this is easy to work. I mean, I, I don't think calculus problems get any easier than that, all right? But I want to try a completely random off the wall substitution. So I said, let's do this. Let's substitute for x theta to the four thirds power. Or there's really no rationale for that at all besides me giving you a dramatic example about substitution and just to take something crazy. All right. But all right, say I do that. Fine. I, I can do that if I want to. You know, it's not against the law to make that substitution. Then if I do that, dx will be substituted as. 4 thirds theta to the 1 third power d theta, okay? So I told you that. It is random. It's out there. All right, I want to see if I can make it work. So when I substitute, what happens? Well, now my integral is in the variable theta. It was in the variable x, and now it's in the variable theta. Here we have x, and the differential is dx, all in terms of x. Here we have theta and d theta. You know, the differential is in terms of theta, and so is the variable. All right, can I still work it, though? All right, so let's say I got the four-thirds. I took that out. Multiply theta four-thirds times theta one-third. You get theta five-thirds. And then from here, I add one to the power, and I get that. And then I do a little simplifying. Okay, so I get this. And, but, oh, what do I do from there? Normally, like, say when we use U substitution, we want the, it's conventional at least to get the final answer in terms of the variable that you started with. That would be X. So then I had to think, of how, do I, how am I going to get that in terms of X? So I separated the power like this. Is, is it true that theta to the four-thirds power squared would be theta to the eight-thirds power? That'd be true because you multiply exponents in this case, and... Then I can resubstitute the fact that theta to the four thirds power is x. And so that says your answer is one half x squared plus c. Not easy, but the substitution was done correctly and it worked. Okay, 
So I did not do it this way because it was easy. I did it this way to make a point about just how broad substitutions are. Now, okay, so I, hopefully I made my point. Now, so when the substitutions look a little bit strange in trigonometric substitution, they're still just substitutions. You're just substituting something in place of x. Now, the goal of any substitution besides this one is that it turns the integral into something that's easy to do. Something, maybe easy is not the right word. It turns the integral into something that you can work, all right? If you can't work it the way it is, then the substitution creates something that you can work, all right? Except for, and this, this substitution made it way harder, but once again, I was just trying to make a point and be dramatic about it. All right, so here's what we'll do with this one. In this integral, it becomes pretty easy to work if you substitute x is one-half tangent theta, and as a result, because remember, you're substituting the x and the differential dx. So all the substitutions are going to be like that. We're going to get the variable totally out of there and in terms of a new variable, including the differential. So if we substitute x is one-half tangent theta, and you might, oh, why do we do that? Don't worry about it right now. I just want you to see what happens if we do this. So we'll substitute x is a half tangent theta, and as a result, dx is one-half secant squared d theta. These are examples of trigonometric substitutions. That kind of substitution will be the overall topic of this video, and there will probably be a part two also. Okay, so let's do that, all right? So I'm going to take my problem that I had up there, and I'm going to make the substitutions, all right? So I have two, and that's not involved in the substitution, so we'll just put two, and one plus four. Four, okay, and I put x as a half tangent theta, so one half tangent theta, okay, squared. And I know you probably think I'm too picky about my lines, but all right, I'll feel better like that. All right, so that goes in for x dx. That's going to be a half secant squared d theta. So I've got to put over here half secant squared theta d theta. Okay, all right, the substitution has been made for x and dx. It now looks like that. Now, uh, at this point, you probably think I'm playing some kind of joke on you that this looks way worse than it did when we started. And I told you that the substitution is supposed to turn it into some problem that we can work. But, you know, we might have to do a little cleaning up, some simplifying. And any time that, maybe not any time, but... Most of the time when you use trig functions, then, you know, identities come into play at some point. So we might have to use some identities too, all right? So let's see. How about this? If for simplifying, I got 2 and 1 half. Those cancel, right? Okay, so that's gone. And let's do this. Let's do otherwise. Uh, I'm going to be left with a, let's put secant squared up here. We don't have to actually keep that attached to the differential, all right? So secant squared, two and one half cancel. And this will be one plus four. And then say I apply this exponent across that product. So I'll get one fourth and then tangent squared. Okay, so there's that much. Is there anything else we could do? Well, I noticed that the one fourth and the four cancel. So, okay, that's gone. And then I'm left with secant squared theta. And then here, 4 and 1 fourth, that's going to cancel to be grand total down here, 1 plus tangent squared. Okay. So, all right, now we're kind of getting somewhere. It's getting simpler. Is there anything else we could do? Well, it is true that 1 plus tangent squared is secant squared, okay? 1 plus tangent squared is secant squared. So, I guess then what we could say is that we got secant squared over secant squared. Okay, 
All right, now it is getting simpler. You may have thought that this looked like it was in pretty bad shape when we put that substitution in, but now not so much. Uh, here's, here's where it appears that we're going. We just get d theta, okay? So do, do we know the answer now? So I could excuse you if you didn't know the answer to this problem just by looking at it. And definitely I can excuse you if you didn't know the answer to that one. But we did all valid simplification. We get this. You should know the answer now. Uh, what is the antiderivative of d theta? Or you could say the antiderivative of 1 d theta. That would be theta plus c. Okay. All right. Theta plus c. Now, just like u substitution, it is generally going to be an objective to get our answer, our antiderivative, in terms of the variable we started with. We started with x, right? Okay, so let's see. Through this substitution, that's the, that's the whole key to getting our original variable back, okay? So, so let me do like this. We'll say... Uh, we used the substitution that x was one-half tangent theta. And I want a way to substitute the theta out. So it's like i got to say theta is equal to what? And then that will involve the x somehow. And then I'll put that in. All right? That's what I need to do. But, okay, how am I going to do that out of this? Look at that. Well, is there a way, um, like, let me see, I'm gonna, before I just tell you, I'm gonna, I thought I would, I'd say like this, I'd say, well, suppose that um, I know that tangent of some angle is one over root two. Is, is there a way to figure out the angle? Like, could you say the angle equals to this or that, like whatever it is? Uh, yeah, there's an operation for that. There's a, a function that tells you that if tangent of theta is equal to this number, 1 over root 2, then theta itself, the angle, is the inverse tangent of 1 over root 2, right? And then you can calculate this by various methods, uh, maybe calculator, uh, and that turns out to be 45 degrees. All right, so this will do it. This crosses the equal sign, you see? That's how you apply the tangent to that number and figure out what the theta of the angle should be. Okay, I think that's fairly straightforward math with numbers, and, but I can apply the same uh, thinking right here, okay? So let's say that let, I'm going to switch this around and I'm going to multiply by 2. So I'm going to say tangent of theta is equal to 2x, all right? And then if I want to know that angle, if I want some equation that says theta equals this, and then that is going to be my resubstitution over here, then it's going to be that theta is equal to inverse tangent of 2x. All right, there you go. So if this is what you get as your antiderivative to that, then now I can take this and put it back in terms of that original variable right there. So here will be my final answer. So it's going to be tangent inverse of 2x plus c. Okay. All right, there we go. And then we are done at that point. All right. Now, so two things. Like, I, I feel like I might start mixing in a little bit of review with some of the videos in it, but I have to be careful with that because, you know, it, there's so much information, we can only include so much of it at any one time. But I thought that I would address something that would be along these lines, okay? So now that I'm done with this one, okay? So real quick, quick summary. I have this problem. I gave you this substitution. I did not tell you the rationale for this. I just said, uh, let's see what happens if we make that substitution, all right? And look, it worked out pretty well, all right? But I wanted to do something, like I said, for a little bit kind of review-ish. Because I get questions that occasionally that don't really pertain to the assignments, but just sort of some background information for the assignments. So here's what we figured out. Uh, bottom line is that we figured out that the antiderivative of 2 over 1 plus 4x squared 
is tangent inverse of 2x plus c. And what would verify this? Is there some kind of built-in check that this is a correct statement or that I got the right answer? Uh, well, yeah, if this is the antiderivative that we found, and so if I took the derivative of tangent inverse of 2x plus c, where what is the c anyway? Some unspecified constant. It's called the constant of integration. If I did that, if I took the derivative of this, then I should get that if I'm, if I'm correct about this, all right? Now, so one, that's kind of a point of review right there, just for me to even say that. I don't want you to forget about the meaning of our answers. Uh, but another point of review that I thought I'd bring up is that th there's a formula for this derivative like there's a formula for anything, okay? So when you learn about the chain rule in Calculus 1, you might learn that a derivative with respect to x of tangent inverse of u, where what are we conceiving the u to be? Uh, the u is, you know, since I'm taking the derivative with respect to x, that is indicating that the variable there be x, uh, the u is some function of x, okay? So it's such as 2x or something like that. So the derivative with respect to x of tangent inverse of u is, well, here's how you do it. It's 1 over 1 plus u squared uh, du dx, okay? Or 1 over 1 plus u squared times u prime, however you like to think about it. So that would be the operative formula for checking this problem. There are lots of formulas. There are the derivatives for the inverse tangents and sines and cosines and all that stuff and hyperbolic functions and logarithms and when you go through uh, your class you just have to kind of get a handle over which assignments or which uh, formulas you need to know okay all right so here goes this would be one over one plus okay so what's u u is 2x so i'm going to take 2x and square it okay and then I need times du dx, but u is equal to 2x, so that would be 2. And so that's going to be 1 over, or not 1, it's going to be, let's put the 2 up there. So that's like a 2 over 1, so I'll multiply those fractions. So 2 over 1 plus 4x squared. Okay, so verified, right? That's what we were expecting to get, given that so we're, I knew the answer was correct. Okay. So that's a, a, I showed you something new, showed you a little bit about what trig substitution is, a little bit of review also, uh, take it or leave it, you know, depending on what you need. And I, here's what's coming up next, okay? I need to explain, obviously, the rationale behind the substitution, because you'll have to think of that yourself. So in the next video, we'll talk in some detail about uh, how do you pick that substitution? Of all things, why did I think it was one-half tangent theta? So we'll just boil the problem down to cases and do some analysis about uh, what the integral contains and decide on our substitution that way.